A variable air volume, VAV, box DDC controller is a digital control device that regulates the amount of conditioned air delivered to a specific zone in a building. It's part of a DDC, direct digital control system, and typically interfaces with the building automation system, BAS. The controller modulates the VAV damper actuator, manages heating valves, monitors airflow sensors, and processes input from zone sensors such as temperature or occupancy. Each VAV box serves one thermal zone, and its DDC controller ensures occupant comfort by adjusting air volume and, when applicable, reheating the air during heating demand. Here is a step-by-step -step overview of how they get installed and connected to various devices. Step 1. Mount the integrated controller on the VAV terminal. We start at the VAV terminal. Slide the integrated controller actuator onto the damper shaft that extends through the box to the outside, align the position indicator with the damper blade position, and tighten the set screw. The actuator's job is simple but critical. It rotates the damper blade to control how much supply air enters the zone. The controller, mounted with it, reads sensors, runs the control logic, and commands the actuator to hit exact airflow targets. Step 2. Connect differential pressure tubes to the inlet flow sensor. Next, connect the high and low pressure tubes from the controller to the VAV inlet flow sensor, often a flow ring or cross with two pitot taps. This sensor measures velocity pressure. The controller converts that to airflow, CFM or liters per second, using the box's K factor. This is how the controller knows how much air, CFM or liters per second the box is delivering vital for minimum ventilation and comfort control. Keep tubing runs short, neat, and kink-free. Match high-low connections correctly. Step 3. Wire the room sensor to the controller. Now we connect the wall-mounted room sensor. Many controllers use a pre-terminated cable to an RJ11, RJ12 jack. Others land on a terminal strip. Some systems use RJ45-style connectors, but remember, it's not Ethernet unless the manufacturer explicitly says so. The room sensor sends zone temperature and often provides a local set point slider, occupancy button, or timed override. Optional add-ons include CO2 and humidity sensing. The controller can use those to reset minimum airflow for demand-controlled ventilation or to respect a humidity limit by avoiding overly low supply temperatures. Step 4. Connect the hot water reheat valve and actuator. For zones that need heating, we wire a reheat valve actuator, typically 0 to 10 VDC, floating, 3-wire, or 2-position. The controller modulates this valve to warm the discharge air when the room drops below the heating set point. Most VAV sequences drive airflow down to a heating minimum CFM and then add heat by opening the valve. Use a normally closed fail-safe actuator when possible and install unions a strainer, and isolation valves for service. In some regions, instead of hot water, a VAV box may use an electric reheat coil. In that case, the controller's output drives a relay or contactor that energizes the electric heating elements. Because electric coils draw much higher current, a separate power circuit, typically 120, 208, or 277 volts, is required and the installer must follow the manufacturer's wiring diagram, breaker sizing, and interlock requirements to ensure safety and code compliance. Step 5. Install an optional discharge air temperature sensor. Place a discharge air temperature sensor downstream of the reheat coil and before any branch takeoffs. The controller uses the discharge air temperature to stabilize reheat, limit discharge temperature, e.g., keep it less than 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35 to 38 degrees Celsius, and catch failures like a stuck valve. Some projects run heating by zone temperature only. Others regulate to a discharge set point with high limit protection. If you have hot water reheat, a discharge air temperature sensor is cheap insurance. Step 6. Bring in electrical power via a 24 vac transformer. Power time. Most VAV controllers run on 24 VAC from a step-down transformer. Feed the transformer with local line voltage 
and add a clearly labeled service switch on the primary side. Land the 24 VAC and common at the controller. A single transformer can feed multiple boxes, but size it by total VA. Controller plus actuator plus accessories per box, then add margin. Avoid daisy chaining 24 VAC over long runs. Voltage drop and nuisance resets will haunt you. Step 7. Daisy chain the BACnet MS over TP network. Next, tie the VAV into the building automation system. We use BACnet MS over TP RS485 on a true daisy chain, controller to controller to controller, ending at the air handler controller. Use a twisted pair, CAT5 or 6 is common as a cable, but you're using it as RS485, not Ethernet. Maintain consistent polarity. A minus to A minus, B plus to B plus. Terminate the segment with 120 ohm resistors at both ends only and provide bias per the building automation system standard. Avoid star connections. RS485 wants a clean, continuous trunk. Step 8. Configure from a room sensor service port. Many systems include an RJ12 or micro USB service port on the room sensor or a small display interface. You can view live values, zone temp, airflow, damper position, and make setup changes like minimum maximum CFM, heating minimum, and PI gains without climbing into the plenum. This speeds startup and reduces ceiling tile disturbance. Save a commissioning profile so the next box is a two minute clone. Step 9. Air balancing and flow verification. After rough in and base configuration, we balance. First, verify the controller's K factor matches the VAV box model and size, and perform any zeroing the manufacturer requires. Then confirm actual airflow with a hood or traverse at the diffuser and compare to the controller's reported CFM. Tune the K factor or sensor offset if allowed. So reported CFM is equivalent to measured CFM at several flow points, typically minimum, mid, and maximum. Step 10. Backnet addressing and BAS integration. Each VAV controller needs a unique identity. On Backnet MS over TP, that's a MAC address, 0 to 127 typical, set with DIP switches or software. The device also has a Backnet device instance number that's unique across the BAS usually set in software. Once addressed, the VAVs appear at the AHU controller and on the front-end workstation. The BAS can trend zone temp and CFM, reset the AHU's duct static pressure based on damper positions, alarm on low flow or sensor faults, and let you tweak set points remotely. Step 11. Modes of operation. Cooling, deadband, heating with reheat. In cooling, the controller opens the damper from minimum CFM toward maximum CFM to drive the zone back to set point using the cool air from the AHU. In deadband, the damper holds minimum CFM with heating and reheat off, sipping ventilation. In heating with reheat, the damper drops to heating minimum CFM and the reheat valve modulates to meat load. If a discharge air temperature sensor is used, it trims the valve to maintain a discharge target and enforce a high limit. Occupancy inputs can bump set points and minimums, e.g. standby versus occupied. Step 12. Final system checks and documentation. Before we call it done, verify the following. Correct sensor values, damper travel end-to-end, -end, valve stroke direction, alarm list clean, correct MAC device instance, proper network termination, and transformer load within VA rating. Print or upload the point list, minimum and maximum CFM, addresses, and final air balance report so the service team has a single source of truth. Important caveat on manufacturer requirements. Last note. Always follow the controller and VAV manufacturer's specific wiring diagrams, addressing rules, termination biasing instructions, and power limitations. Models vary on input-output types, sensor pinouts, grounding, network polarity, and configuration workflows. The steps we showed are the industry pattern. Your submittals and manuals are the final word. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our HVAC and plumbing estimating spreadsheets to streamline your construction bidding process.
check out our HVAC, electrical, and plumbing construction forms to help you run your business and explore our online courses for in-depth training.